So, if we've ever talked about B-roll and storytelling, something that I profitize just a ridiculous amount is the five-shot method. And I've covered the five-shot method in some other, like, B-roll videos and stuff before, but I've never given it its own dedicated explanation. So, so that's what this is. If you've managed to make it this far in knowing me or taking classes or whatever with me without having heard about this, here's what the five-shot method is. It's just a way of creatively stringing together B-roll in a way that either supports or, in some cases, carries the main narrative. It's just, it's a way of making your B-roll tell a story. And as you may have guessed from the name, there are five shots that are required in the five-shot method. The first is a wide or establishing shot. This just lets your audience know where things are happening. The next shot you'll need is a close-up of your talent's face. Yeah, you do need to have a person involved in this sequence in order for it to work, but getting that close-up of their face establishes a relationship with the audience, and it also just lets us know what they look like. The next shot you'll need is a close-up of their hands doing whatever it is they're doing in this sequence. It just gives them something to do. It's visually interesting, and it, it again, further connects with the audience. The next shot you'll need is an over-the-shoulder. This is an experiential, like, point-of-view thing that makes the audience feel connected with what's happening. It adds some visual diversity, and it just really sort of ties some things together. The final shot you'll need is a creative shot. Now, this can be something from way down low, shooting up. It can be something that's being shot through some kind of filter, something like that. It's just, this is your, this is your flare shot. This is your chance to be creative and wild in this sequence. Once you've got all of those shot, do they have to be put together in that exact order? No, of course not. Be creative, play around with it, put them on a timeline, move them around, make them tell the story you want them to tell. Here, let, let's, let's just take a look at some examples. Now in that sequence, our talent walks into that garden area, unpacks the camera, gets it ready for shooting, and is it complicated? No, not in any way, shape, or form. Is it easy to understand, and does it support the I want to be a filmmaker narrative? Yes, absolutely. Here, let's take a look at one more example. This is actually my kid in our front yard zip line for the first time this summer. Okay, so, you may have noticed that I had more than five shots in there, and that's okay, because they still narratively fit with the story, right? They, they made sense. If you didn't see them actually going down the zipline, it wouldn't have made sense for the story. I also didn't use a true close-up at the end there. I went more of a medium shot. In this case, since I made it, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's okay, because it still establishes that audience connection. We still see his face. We get a good, clear look at him and kind of develop that connection. The point with all of this, all of this, and you're gonna hear me say this a lot, is that we need to shoot with intention. That means we know the story we're trying to tell, and it is our job to tell it visually. Even if there's no audio, you should be able to visually get the story to your audience. All right, go make it happen. Keep shooting.